If you have been struggling with classroom management in your middle school math classroom, or are just looking for a few extra tips on how to better manage your classroom behaviors, this video is for you. If we don't already know each other, my name is Kathy Martin, and I'm the creator of the Pre-Algebra Teachers Middle School Math Membership. We are your one-stop shop with ready-to-made and rigorous middle school math lessons for you to successfully teach your middle school math students. In this video and in the next video, we are going to be talking about classroom management in a classroom management video series. So if you have been struggling with students who are disruptive, students who maybe are just apathetic, students who are talking back to you, giving you a hard time, this video series is going to be for you. I absolutely love classroom, manage, classroom management. I love talking about um, how do we make our classrooms better, um, you know, just more of a family um, with students actually working just as a team. And anyway, I love it all. So this video, this first video is actually um, the first in a series, as I said, and let's dive in. So if you have been struggling with classroom management, if you've been struggling with behaviors, if you've been struggling just with just your students in general, um, it's really important to get this started at the beginning of the year. But if you are, if you happen to be watching this, at some point during the year, it's also okay to reset. So in this first video, we are talking about the importance of classroom rules and procedures. If you don't have classroom rules and procedures, you need to get them installed, I guess is probably the wrong word, but you need to get them going in your classroom today. The key to success really is having rules and procedures for your students to follow. Some teachers choose to create their own rules for their own classrooms. Some teachers choose to collectively as a classroom set their rules together. Whichever way you want is fine, but you just have to remember to be consistent with your rules and your students need to have there has to be buy-in for your students right they have to understand the rules they have to know what's going to happen if they break the rules and they have to really just fully understand what their what the rules are and stay within them so as i said what should your rules be that's totally up to you your students you and your students can collectively come together and establish rules as a classroom so you have individual rules for each of your classes or you could if you have say if you teach six classes everyone can put the rules together in all of your classes and then maybe you can choose five or six that everybody has kind of like the common the common thread among all of them so you're not having like six different sets of rules for six classes because that would be a little bit <laughs> difficult to do okay so that's rules what should your procedures be well, your procedures are, it's like rules is number one important, and then procedures is like 1B, so it's like 1A, 1B, okay? So your procedures and routines really should be what you think is going to run your classroom most efficiently. So for me, I have a routine and procedure for the bathroom. I don't believe in like bathroom passes or not allowing students to use the bathroom um, that's just my personal preference. So we have a procedure for that. Um, I have a procedure for turning in homework. This is, you know, this is how we do it. Uh, I have a procedure for what a student needs to do if they are absent or if they are late to class. And I have a procedure for how to access classroom supplies if they don't have something. You know, those are just my I, those are just four of the procedures I have in my classroom, but, but every procedure is unique to each individual classroom. You know, you might already have established a bathroom procedure or you might, you know, you might not know, like you might be thinking, oh, I don't have a procedure for absent students. I need to think of one. You know, what are things that you can establish that, let me rephrase, what are things that students are always coming to you about um, that you can establish a procedure or rule around or a routine around. So if you have students who are constantly like, what did I miss in class yesterday? Or the best, did we do anything in class yesterday, right? Um, 
establish a procedure around that, like get them trained so that they don't even have to ask you like, okay, where do you, if they ask you like, all right, where do you go? I have a, you know, check the spot or check the website or check whatever you need to do. And they, even if you set the procedure, they will need reminding because they're kids, right? So we just have to get them trained into what the procedures are. If you have your rules and procedures set and you would like a copy of my syllabus so you can print it and have parents and students sign it so that it lists out the rules, it lists out expectations for homework, it lists out your contact information, um, all the things, it's totally editable. You can click the button right below this video and get a copy for yourself. It's especially important if you are watching this at the beginning of the year maybe summertime and you want to be able to go in in the new school year feeling prepared feeling ready to go this syllabus template is perfect it's totally for free grab a copy right underneath this video that's it for me check out the next video all about in our classroom management um, series until then talk to you soon